smell what the bloodline is cooking. Could we be seeing the biggest two-man power trip in wrestling history? And when you think of a two-man power trip, you probably remember Stone Cold Steve Austin turning heel and aligning himself with Triple H after WrestleMania 17. That two-man power trip fell short mainly because of an untimely injury for Triple H where he tore his quad and basically missed the rest of the year, effectively killing the storyline altogether. But with Triple H now in the current times in charge of all things creative for WWE, he may just bring back a newer, bigger, modern day version of it. Maybe even better. It's Sports Key to Wrestling. I'm Kevin. Let us know what you think of The Rock and Roman Reigns aligning before WrestleMania 40. On the February 16th episode of WWE SmackDown, The Rock confirmed that he's a part of the Bloodline, the Samoan dynasty faction that has ruled over WWE for years under Universal Champion Roman Reigns, along with Paul Heyman, some version of the Usos and recently Solo Sokoa. Now with The Rock, a lot of star power has been added with less than two months to go before WrestleMania. It may be one of the most refreshing moments for the faction in quite some time. And this is The Rock, by the way, one of the most famous people in the world. For those of you only in the wrestling bubble, many casual fans have not seen him as a villain in over 20 years. So that's a big deal. He was dressed like he was walking right out of 1997 with a $500 shirt vest on, claiming that the Salt Lake City crowd broke the indoor attendance record for the biggest collective of trailer trash he's ever seen. He threatened to slap the herpes off someone's face. Yeah, it was a show-closing moment that felt big time with the great one reminding everyone that he's still one of the best talkers ever in pro wrestling, with the scene showing a unified front against Cody challenging Roman Reigns for the championship in Philadelphia. The Rock coming in changes the entire dynamic of the main storyline heading into WrestleMania, because it's clear he's the guy in the bloodline now. And maybe not Roman Reigns, you know, the one who's broken the modern record for a world title reign, a title he still holds? Yeah, we're not used to seeing him playing this type of role in quite some time. There's quite literally nobody in wrestling other than The Rock who could maybe diminish Roman's star power or relegate him to a secondary role to just the guy who's nodding along, smiling as Rock plays the hits on the microphone. Reigns, though, needed something fresh beyond just the callous, manipulative, cheating villain that he's been for some years heading into this big match the relationship between him and The Rock with the stakes at hand certainly adds something new. The gravity in that scene of seeing this collective, family-bonded, tribal-connected talent working together is a revived act at the top of the card for WWE and it came at just the right time. So how exactly can WWE handle the whole two-man power trip dynamic and have both stars still remain red hot coming into this big show? Obviously, we're already seeing elements of their alliance together, and if they are set to face Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins in some way together or separately, 40, then there's absolutely no way they could, would, or should lose. Yeah, that's if we factor in the whole tag team thing going down in Philadelphia. This is all hypothetical and speculative, but yeah, a lot of people thinking there'll be a Rock Reigns versus Rollins Rhodes tag team match at WrestleMania, maybe on night one. And then on night two, we get the promised and already advertised Cody Rhodes challenging Roman Reigns for the WWE Championship on night two. And obviously you have The Rock floating around that entire situation. But as we record this, maybe that all changes at some point too. Let's hope we at least get Cody versus Roman, right? You should definitely check out our other video about why The Rock joining the bloodline for WrestleMania 40 is the best for business. Maybe WWE is already a few steps ahead of us on that entire story to begin with. Assuming The Rock and Roman Reigns win at WrestleMania, and we're just assuming, we're not saying it has to be The Rock, but come on, The Rock winning a big match at WrestleMania makes a lot of sense. Night two, it has to be Cody, right? Pinning Roman Reigns, a clean end to the story, it's finished. Yes, the jubilant ending to a WrestleMania that we were supposed to get in LA, we get in the city of brotherly love. Both The Rock and Roman Reigns may not be super present on WWE television a whole lot after WrestleMania, maybe they are, but through uh, maybe those pre-recorded segments, they can remain a part of active storylines. WWE's been able to keep the bloodline thing cooking 
without Roman there. I bet they can do it without The Rock there. And WWE could advance the whole two-man power trip dynamic without them having to be there all the time. But when is it time for them to be on television often? The Rock and Roman Reigns on TV together is a real attraction. We're not really sure how that'll work out given The Rock's insane schedule as one of the biggest men in all of entertainment, not just WWE. But at least uh, there's a little bit more of an incentive for him to come around considering that he's now a part of the TKO board governing over WWE. Maybe that's a part of the entire arrangement to begin with. The fact that The Rock pivoted along with all of WWE from the Rock vs. Reigns WrestleMania 40 plan and was so willing to embrace turning heel in 2024 says a lot about what he thinks of this story and the layers in it. The way that fans are invested in Roman as a villain the way that fans are invested in Cody as a hero. Remember, this is a guy for years who hasn't played a bad guy. Even when he played the role of Black Adam, he was more of an anti-hero more than anything. He wouldn't be a bad guy in the Fast and the Furious franchises, looking over his shoulder, giving you that million dollar smile. He wouldn't be a bad guy in any of his other movies in the last few years, because no one wanted to see that. But in WWE, the rules are different. Now he's a bad guy, the baddest maybe, in all of the WWE Universe. And he hasn't even had a match this year, yet. The reality is The Rock is just way too good and it's really only a matter of weeks before he starts getting a full-blown good guy reaction. It's hard not even for the crowd in Salt Lake City, who he was trash talking to, not to react like, oh my god, it's The Rock! Yeah, can you help yourself? I mean, really, it's The Rock. But hopefully that doesn't happen until after WrestleMania when Cody finishes his story. Yeah, The Rock is still someone who can weigh that line between beloved Hollywood movie star that wrestling fans remember and that modern day wrestling fans want to boo at the benefit of Cody. We can only hope that it leads to Roman Reigns and The Rock teaming up at some point in the future or maybe WrestleMania, maybe SummerSlam. There's a lot of options for WWE to have a big time combination of Roman Roman and Rock together. We suggest a tag team title reign maybe for them, given that The Rock isn't going to wrestle a whole lot in the next year. It probably isn't a very good idea, but hey, this is the bloodline. The Rock can call the shots. Hey, Jimmy, go fill in for me. The bloodline has the tag team championship. At the same time, these are stars that are big enough that they don't really need the tag team titles to prove their dominance. They're big enough that they don't even need maybe even a world title to get the inevitable face-off between the two. Triple H's policy of handling storylines takes a simple and straightforward approach to these type of things. We know that it contradicts what happened with Cody where he gave up his WrestleMania spot and then they took it back six days later without explanation, but who cares? Give the fans what they want, organically pivot, and pay off a storyline that was there the whole time. Storyline that lays in the background, though, is one that can simmer between The Rock and Roman Reigns. It isn't going to require The Rock to wrestle more than a few times between WrestleMania 40 and WrestleMania 41, assuming that he's even available to do that. But considering WWE's expanded international schedule, the option for big money matches in Saudi Arabia, WWE doing things in Europe they haven't done in years, The Rock being a part of those things would be pretty cool. 